Okay, so now we're going to take on the part of today's lecture in regards to the final exam preparation. Okay, so in terms of week 11, um, all of you were provided with a recording of the week 11 um, class and the main topics and have also, also received the, re, the tutorial and homework questions. Uh, so just reiterating that you, it's uh, important that you attempt all the tutorial questions and homework questions, but in particular to concentrate on the making sure you complete the tutorial question as well as the homework question problem 9.4. So this will help you in your final exam preparation. So in terms of the final exam preparation, how to, uh, how to prepare, so as per the lesson plan, the, the exam is a take home exam. Okay, so what that means a little bit different to the exams that you've experienced in the past at Maclay where you would sit in uh, for two hours in class, have reading time, um, and then obviously close book exam of, under supervision. With the take home exam from 9.30 a.m. on Monday, uh, next Monday, the 27th of April, your exam will be available on Moodle. Uh, for you to do, uh, and then you will have till 9.30 a.m. Wednesday the 29th of April 2020 to do the exam and upload it to Moodle. And they will not be given any extensions post this time. It doesn't mean you have to work on the exam for 48 hours straight. Um, it's certainly not gonna take you 48 hours. Um, my advice would be uh, that you would set aside time as if you were doing a normal exam um, in, at the college and actually sit down and do the exam for two, three hours, uh, however long it's gonna take. It's open book, so you can use your resources um, and everything like that, so you don't have to worry, um, you know, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, having, not having a, cal you know, only having a certain calculator or not having access to your resources. You've got everything available to you. So my advice is, so you don't leave it to the last minute or do bits and pieces and be rushed sit down, do it all in a two hour, three hour period, finish it, put it away, come back to it the next day, review it, revise it, make sure you're happy and then you upload it. Okay, just don't leave it to the last minute. Um, the take home exam instructions, which you, uh, the pen I think you've received in, in, by email, yes? Have you received these take home exam instructions? Yep. Yep, okay, so these would have been uploaded to Moodle. Um, as well as um, uh, I've included in, our, in this email today. So these are the take home exam instructions. So I, I implore you to read these in detail. So you are expected to follow these instructions unless they conflict with our written, written instructions appearing on the exam. So these instructions uh, will be exactly as they are on the exam, okay? And failure to follow these instructions may result in your grade being reduced. So the exam questions will be provided via Moodle and you are to submit it via Moodle by turn it in. So this will be in the assessment submission folder of each unit using uh, during the 48 hours of a given time frame. So between the Monday and the Wednesday, and the time I've already given you. It won't be available beforehand and it will not be available after and you will not be able to turn in the exam afterwards as well, okay? So under the exam section, under your unit outlines and assessment, you'll have the final exam that will be available to you from next Monday. Um, so obviously at this stage, it's still not being configured, but that's where you go. Uh, the exam will be sitting there waiting for you and this is where you turn it in. Um, okay, so in terms of the rest of the instructions, uh, you must prepare your exam using Word processing software on a computer. So if you do not have Word, you need to let us know ASAP uh, because you're not able to print off the exam and write it and upload it. It must be typed in Word. All right. Um, that way then that's the best way for us to be able to mark it. Um, so the exam questions will be published in Moodle in the assessment folder. We will post an announcement in week 12 by mentioning your unit name and specific time of the exam paper being published, but this will be 9.30 a.m. on Monday. You have to save the file as shown here, your student ID, your first name, last name, my name, 
T1 2020. And it's also recommended that before beginning to write that your to write that your name and save the document and also activate any automatic save functions that you have on Word. That way then if your computer um, crashes, uh, you've still got, a, you've got it saved. Um, make sure, do not rewrite the questions in your answer document to avoid um, the similarity percentages being high and turn it in. The recommendation is just to have the answers, not the questions, okay? Obviously, if you need to replicate the uh, some of the question in response to the answer, that's fine, but do not copy it full word for word. All right. um, you're also advised to create a copy of the document on another storage um, facility. So that can be things such as Dropbox, Google Drive, or something external. Again, just in case your computer hard drive crashes. If the fact that you're, you lose your exam, um, on your computer, that won't be a reason for a delay. All right, so you'll need to, it's your responsibility to make sure you have a backup and that that file is ready to be uploaded in time. Um, it's important not to contact us, uh, the lecturers directly in relation to your computer melt, um, not working, an, um, an illness or being unable to finish the exam. Any of these issues, you've got to contact the registrar's office. Why? Because from a, from a, um, if there's a hardship issue or a special consideration, um, they can handle that directly and make sure that that gets to the appropriate channels so that we could approve any supplementary exam for you. Your finished exam must be must need to be submitted as either a Word or PDF document in the specific unit's assessment submission folder in Moodle, as we've put here. Again, under the midterm, under the final exam. Um, okay, uh, within the given time frame. So any, not before Monday 9.30 a.m. the 27th and not after 9.30 a.m. on the 29th of April. Um, you will not be able to submit your answers after the given time frame and only one submission will be accepted. So please make sure you recheck the document before submitting it to Moodle, okay? Because once it's submitted, that is it. All right, so again, my recommendation is do the exam in a fixed sitting don't go come back and forth, back and forwards. Finish it, save it, sleep on it, go back up to it, review it, make sure you're happy, then submit it. Failure to submit the wrong document again may result in a grade reduction. Make sure you're attaching the right document. During the given time frame of 48 hours, you cannot seek any assistance from the academic support team. So that's myself included. You cannot call me, text me, or email me asking me for asking me for asking guidance on how to answer the questions or any technical, I cannot give you any of that. Um, the only time um, that you have to contact us in this period, all right, is if uh, you've got, a, if there's a typo in the exam or something doesn't look like it's been written right, then obviously let us know and then we'll also make, fix the error and let everybody know in the class about the same thing. Um, for numerical units such as accounting, a formula sheet uh, formula sheet will be provided with the with the um, exam question. Okay, if 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 required. Um, should your computer become inoperable while you are taking the exam, um, you may use McClay's uh, facilities on the campus. Um, however, additional time is not usually granted in case of computer malfunctions during take home exam. So again you need to show sufficient evidence that, uh, that there has been a problem here. And then lastly, make sure that you, that you keep the save file until the final grades have been released. So keep it on for you just in case there's an issue. Okay, uh, Nepena, are you clear on the take home exam instructions I've just gone through? Yeah. Yeah, any questions on that? No. No worries. All right, so I'm taking you through the take home. It's a little bit different. We're all learning on the fly as well. So we're trying, we're trying to do um, obviously the best we can as well. Okay, so some tips on your final exam preparation. All topics will be relevant in this final exam. Okay, so that's topics one in week one through to week 12, even though, even if it's been covered in the first trimester, in the mid trimester exam there is a chance that will pop up in the final exam. However, 
probably more relevant will be some very important topics. Uh, will be bank reconciliations, internal controls, adjustment entries, accounting for inventory, accounting for debt, bad debts, and specific special journals. All topics after the mid-trimester exam. So you can sort of read between the lines where we're going here with this, that there may be some, maybe some parts that come from the first half, but more likely going to be more from the second half of the trimester. All right? I can tell you bank reconciliations will play a very, very important part of this final exam. So the topic we did, there's a video available. Every topic, because not every student has uh, turned up to every class, we have recorded the uh, we have recorded the lessons for each week. I advise you to read the video, watch the video again on bank reconciliations in particular, and find out how that is done step by step. Okay, part of your exam provision, re, uh, re, uh, revision. Yep. Um, we've also got the, uh, the, as part of the practice questions we've got for you, there is a question on the bank reconciliation. That is both the practical exam revision plus the online activity we've got for week 12. So really, really important you go through the bank recs. Um, of course, because it's a take home exam, you've also got access to that video while still in the exam. So the resources are there for you. So as part of your exam preparation, review all your textbook readings, review the lecture slides and materials, including the videos, as I said, I've prepared for you. Again, because we're now online, you have uh, the ability to do so. The good news is, is that, like I said, this, this exam is, is likely to feature most heavily on the second half of the trimester. Pretty much the second half of the trimester has been all online. So everything is, is video recorded. So even if you've forgotten something, the good news is it's there available for you to watch. So prepare your own summaries. Don't just read and highlight what we've prepared, all right? Or, or just highlight the textbook actually read through and make your own notes. Redo practical questions, including tutorial and homework questions, particularly the ones we highlight, um, as well as the practical questions we give you today, the online question, online exercise, plus the past trimester exam. Redo the optional questions, make sure you check your answers against the solutions. Generally, the optional questions in the homework questions are the longest because they actually combine all of the topics learned for that week. The reason why we make it optional is because we generally do small snippets of those, of those parts of the question, all the prior questions. That question is a consolidation. So again, if you're struggling for time to redo or you haven't done any of the homework or tutorial questions, if you haven't done it as a minimum, do the optional questions. Redo the weekly quizzes to test your understanding. They are both the questions, the tutorial quick knowledge questions, as well as the online questions in Moodle. And very important, practice, practice, practice. Because as, as I've always been told, if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. That's the big lesson, okay? So it's really, really important as much practice you can. You basically got seven days from today for when the exam will be released. So there is still plenty of time. Um, again, remember the lecture slides are not a substitute for reading and understanding the textbook. Expect questions of roughly the same level of difficulty as the homework questions, hence why it's so important to do, and we've reiterated those in the questions today. You need to be able to apply what you have learnt, not just memorise notes. And this is really particular for take home exam. Because it's, uh, you've got to have access to your notes, you don't need to memorise. You're in a very, very fortunate position um, you know, students in the past have had to memorise formulas, had to memorise notes, memorise readings. You don't need to do any of that. So the time that you save not needing to memorise, my suggestion is, is actually to make a good set of notes rather than um, just put it together or just copy and paste questions. Actually have your notes there nice and clean. Have an index. That's what I always do. Have an index of your notes, a summary, you don't need to recreate questions, recreate material, just reference it back to your material. So that when you've got a question, you go to your index and go, oh yeah, okay, this is the summary, this is where I've got to go, okay? Use discussion forums for each topic for any questions, if you've got a question, or 
make sure that you're emailing or calling me during this week if you've got any questions and give you some guidance. Don't leave your preparation to the last minute, very important. And make sure with this exam in particular, it's a little bit different. As I said, don't just do a little bit, you know, 20 minutes uh, on Monday, maybe 30 minutes at night. Tuesday morning, you might do another half an hour. Do it all in one sitting. In one sitting as if, as if you are doing the exam in class. Because if you do a little bit here, a little bit there, you won't be motivated, all right? And particularly, you know, you've got other subjects outside of accounting one. Again, my advice is do one exam in a, in a sitting, take a break, do the other exam, and then do the other exam, depending on how many you've got, all right? And then, so spend one day doing that, or whatever needs you, and then the next day you'll spend going back on that exams that you've done, reviewing, making sure you're happy with it, and, and then send it. So um, that's my advice, and remember to not panic, all right? You don't need to panic, uh, particularly in these take-home exams. You've got time, you've got 48 hours. No one's ever had 48 hours to do an exam before. You have the time. Um, so use that time, plan, plan your time, okay? Don't, um, don't um, like I was saying, don't leave it all cramming it to the last minute. Don't just do bits here and there um, and then leave too much to the end. And good luck is our message, all right? So what we've done for you here in terms of the exam, for your exam preparation, so, You've got all the tutorial questions, you've got the homework questions the, and the online activities we've given you, okay? So, what have we provided you in terms of exam revision material for you for this week that you can take home and do, okay? We've provided you with these practical activities. Take note of the questions that are in these practical activities. Basically, if we haven't included something in these practical questions, it's most likely not going to be on the exam. If something is in this practical questions, take it as if it's going to be the exam. If it's not, then that's good fortune for you. You've learnt it, if it's not in there, that's okay. If it's in there, you know you're ready, okay? So the topics um, that I can tell you you were very likely to be in there is you will get a question on inventory methods. That's pretty much a certainty, okay? All right, and you will be asked to calculate um, a transaction based on the periodic method, and you'll need to do one either under the FIFO system or LIFO system, okay, or average cost. All right, so we won't give you a question where you need to do all three, that would be too much. All right, but we will give you a perpetual question, all right, that will require you under one of the methods. So in this case, we've given you a costing example, and we're asking you to prepare an inventory record showing the transactions under the FIFO method. Then to determine the cost of sales and ending inventory for the month of May. And without recalculating the amounts, describe the differences you would expect to see in the cost of sales ending inventory and pro gross profit calculations. If the company adopted the LIFO costing system and the average costing system rather than the FIFO, okay? So like I was saying, it's unlikely in the exam question you'll have to do so many different costing systems, but by practicing this question, if you do get it, at least you're prepared, okay? And then we've given you the solution. So have a look, my, my advice is to prepare these questions all right, without looking at the solutions. All right, putting it together as best you can. All right, that way then you can go back and compare your answers to the solutions and have a look at the way we've laid it out for you. All right, so by doing that, this is the way we give you the solutions, one for, check, for checking point, but two, so also you can get an understanding of our expectations of how we want the answer to be in terms of the outline. All right, so under the inventory method, that is um, week eight, retail inventory. We spent a lot of time uh, working through uh, the various cost um, inventory methods and going through the practical um, practicalities behind it. So this, 
this practical activity is really good, um, but also the tutorial and homework questions from that week, if you are struggling, uh, will help you with those questions as well. So another question uh, is in regards to internal controls and an identifying internal control strengths and weaknesses, okay? So in this case, this question, the following situations suggest a strength or weakness in internal control. Identify each as a strength or weakness and give the reason for your answer. Okay, so again, understanding internal controls. That was done in week 10, all right? So make sure you take the time to understand what internal controls, when is there a weakness, um, and being able to identify an answer to um, rectification as well. Exercise 3.5 is adjusting entries, okay? So in this case, again, very, very similar to what you did um, in the first half of the trimester. Again, you may get a question about adjusting entries. You need to understand the types of adjusting entries and actually journalize the adjusting entries. So again, you may see this question pop up in the exam. Again, you may not because it was covered in the first trimester exam. Bank reconciliations, I can guarantee you, you will get a question on the bank reconciliation. My advice for bank reconciliations is to complete it as many times as you can and as slowly as you can to start with and quicken up the pace. The more you do, the quicker you will get at it and the better you will get. So my advice is to probably do three to four practice, practice questions on bank reconciliations. With the materials we've provided you for week 12, uh, we have provided you two opportunities to do bank reconciliations. We also gave you in week number 10 is when we did the internal controls. We also have given you a bank reconciliation question as part of the online class activity. Okay, so there's your third opportunity to do a bank reconciliation. All right. So these practical questions, uh, it says you're about to complete the bank reconciliation from McLean for the month end of 30 September. You've been able to obtain the following information. The cash balance as per the general ledger of one amount and the bank statement balance at another. You've been given additional information which has been included in the bank statement but not in the ledger. And then you've been given additional information from the cash payments and cash receipts journal. And the deposits and payments that are not appearing on the bank statements or have not cleared. An error was discovered in the cash payments journal. A check for the payment of the supplies account was drawn for 675.18, but recorded as 657.18. So you need to prepare the bank reconciliation for McClay as of 30 September and prepare any journal entries required as a result of this reconciliation. So journal entries to adjust the error and journal entries to include additional information in the bank statement that is not in the ledger. And again, you're given the answers to that and the adjustments required, okay? So again, the bank reconciliation itself, we're not gonna give you 50,000 transactions or 50,000 checks, but the point is, is that you continually get the process and understand. There's a lot of questions that are included, sorry, a lot of marks included on the bank reconciliation as it should because there's quite a number of steps involved. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities to gain marks. And if you get full marks, you're gonna get a long way towards uh, passing the exam. But at the same time, there's a lot of marks that can be lost if you don't practice your bank reconciliations. Okay, all right, so there's your journals. The next question that we've given you is accounting for receivables, which is again is week 11, okay? Um, so the, um, in this case, you've got Monarch's maps, balance sheet as at 30 June 2016, showing the following. Accounts receivable is $60,000, less than allowance for doubtful debts. So again, this is a very, very similar question that you may get on the exam. So you need to answer, how much of the receivable did Monarch expect to collect? Stated differently, what was the expected realizable value of these receivables? Number two, journalise without explanations the following entries for Monarch during the 2017 financial year. I'm sorry, from 1 July 16. Total credit sales were $80,000, of which 3% of sales were estimated to be uncollectible. Monarch received cash payments on account during the financial year of 74,000, 
$300. So again, that is going to um, uh, state for you uh, what your uh, provision for allowance for doubtful debts under the income statement method. Actual write-offs of accounts receivable totaled $2,700. These were previously included in the allowance for doubtful debts. So as per the week 11 recording, you need to actually now write off the bad debt. And 30 for June 2017, aging of receivables indicates that $2,200 of the total receivables is bad. So you need to journalize those three transactions. Point number three, post the transactions of the accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful debts, T accounts. So we need to actually prepare the T accounts for allowance for doubtful debts and the accounts receivable. Calculate and report Monarch's receivables and related allowance on the 30th of June 2017. Balance sheet. <clears throat> what is the net realizable value of receivables at 30 June 17? How much is the bad debt expense for the 2017 financial year? Finally, under point four, what if the beginning balance in the allowance for doubtful debt had instead been $200 credit? <clears throat> Journalise the entry or entries that would change. What would be the ending balance in the allowance for doubtful debts after posting the entries? What would be the balance in the accounts receivable? So you're given the solutions for each of the four questions. Okay, now like I was saying, this practical question has all four, um, has all four uh, potential requirements or scenarios that could come up in the exam. Again, in the exam, you may not get all four. You might only get two, but the important thing is that you um, work through the example. So in this case, in requirement one, you've got the calculation of the net realizable value, which is the taken away of the accounts receivables less the allowance for doubtful debts. In uh, A, uh, journal number A, you've got to account for the sales of $80,000, uh, ignoring GST in this event. Uh, as well as making an allowance for doubtful debts, which is two, which is based on being 3% of $80,000, $2,400. Because it's under the income statement method and not under the age receivables, uh, you are taking, um, you are essentially uh, calculating um, the allowance for that doubtful debts, not increasing or decreasing or taking the difference. You're just doing it purely based on net credit sales. Then you need to actually account for the cash that's been received, the $74,300. Under B, you've got write-offs of accounts receivable totaling $2,700. So that's against the actual accounts receivable amount. Um, and you're contouring off the accounts receivable to allowance for doubtful debts. And under C, we're calculating the bad debts expense for uh, $2,200 minus our $1,700, which is our $500, all right? Because at 30 June 17, the aging of the receivables indicates that $2,200 of the total receivable is bad, okay? Taking into consideration that we've already got a balance of $1,700. And then the requirements to take up the T-Ledger for accounts receivable allowance for doubtful debt, Requirement number three uh, being um, then to obviously also do the net balance sheet here. Yeah, so you've got your account, accounts receivable, less amounts for doubtful debt, your net accounts receivable, therefore your bad debts expense for the year. And then requirement number four, um, the question about uh, what happens if the allowance for doubtful debts had been $200 in credit? What changes would you make? All right, so again, just going through everything and making sure. All right, so the answers are there. Like I said, try to uh, work through the solutions, uh, the questions as best you can without the solutions and then going back and checking. Uh, the next exercise uh, that we have for you, which is exercise 5.5, is journalizing purchase and sales transactions using the perpetual system. So under retailing. Okay, so you're given a bunch of transactions and you need to journalize the February transactions, the sole art gift, uh, sole art gift shop, and no need to explain for explanations there. 
So you've obviously got the periodic system that's perpetual. Most likely in an exam scenario, you will be given questions relating to the perpetual system. All right. So again, as many, many questions as you can, um, can answer on the perpetual system, the better. This will be very typical of the type of question you'll be given to generalise those questions, to generalise those entries. And they, of course, in terms of retail uh, operations and retail inventory being week seven and eight, how we did those systems. So week seven related to the perpetual and the periodic system, week eight, the retail inventory under FIFO and LIFO method. So if do those questions, do them on a Word document, give them as much practice as you can. This will give you a very, very strong idea of what's gonna be in the exam itself. We've also provided you with an exam revision online activity um, in class activity, which is, which is uh, extending from the Draper consulting uh, question that we had for the first trimester exam. So in this case, you've got a bunch of various requirements. The first being um, to record the transactions in the special journals and the balance the special journals and post the T accounts. So we've given you both the questions and the answers to these um, questions. So when we're doing special journals, that's week nine, accounting for information systems. Okay. And here as well, you've got preparing the perpetual inventory records for January for Draper using the LIFO method. Journalise and post the January transactions using the perpetual inventory record uh, created in the requirement run. So you prepare the inventory records perpetual using LIFO and then do the journals. And then journalise and post the adjusting entries, noting each adjusting amount as adjustment after posting all adjusting entries, prove the equality of debits and credits in the ledger. Okay, next part is a bank reconciliation. So again, another opportunity to prepare the bank reconciliation and then journalising any transactions for any income or expenses not posted through the ledger as well as any, um, any uh, errors. Uh, then it moves on to journalising the entry to record and establish the allowance using the percentage method for January credit sales and journalise the entry to record the customer's bad debt. So again, we've given you temp, uh, outline and templates of how to do that as well. So all of your ability to answer here, we've given you, um, we've given you all the templates. So all you need to do is from questions, um, just come back up, one through to nine, is just fill out the templates as required. So this is another way of looking at these practical activities. However, we've just given you one case scenario being Draper Consulting. Now in the exam, we won't be just giving you one, one case study and then from there have a bunch of questions. You're all gonna have different questions, but this is another way of consolidating. So as you can see from this in-class activity, it has very, very similar questions to the practical activities that we've given you here one being different questions, one being in, in a case study. So again, what this is telling you, it is giving you, you read between the lines, it is giving you the topics that you need to study. Okay, so make sure as you're working through them, take a note of the topics that we're giving you here. Answer them, provide the answers, don't just get the solutions. Because if you can actually answer the questions, check it against the solutions and correct yourself, by the time you've got the exam, you've got a good set of notes because you've already answered them. There's your notes there for you. Whereas if you just get the solutions, that's fine. You can copy and paste the solutions, but you won't understand what you're doing. All right, so again, I implore you to, uh, to give those questions a go. Finally, what we've also provided you is a uh, past trimester exam to, to look at, okay? So again, there will be a combination of multiple choice questions. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of practice questions you can, uh, in terms of uh, practical exercise to give in terms of multiple choice. However, if you do the Moodle questions online and the quick, quick, quick check questions every week uh, relating to these topics, you will be fine, okay? So generally speaking, for this exam, initially there was 20 questions of multiple choice. 
because it's now moving online and it is more difficult to assess multiple choice questions online, these will be cut down. So you will not, most likely not get as many multiple choice questions in the exam. But again, this is an opportunity, review these multiple choice questions to get an idea of the type of, uh, the type of multiple choice questions that you may get on the exam. Okay, and then practice them. Uh, again, uh, part B, you've got a question relating to the perpetual syst inventory system on a FIFO basis. So whether it's FIFO, LIFO, or average cost, you're just interchanging the calculation method. But again, as you can see, it's been brought up in this practice exam. It's not only been brought up in the practice past trimester exam, it's also been brought up in the practical questions and in the Draper Consulting. So you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar it's going to be in the final exam. Okay, so again, questions relating to uh, the um, relating to that question are there, and answers are provided. Question two, a question relating to allowance for doubtful debts using the aging of receivable method. So again, another question relating to the aging of receivable method. Again, telling you most likely that's going to be in there. All right, and the ledgers again, and then preparing the balance sheet extract as per what we did in the uh, week 11 topic. Uh, question in relation to special journals. Again, another question on special journals for you to, to, to learn. All right, in this case, you've got the purchases journal, the cash payments journal, the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. So again, very, very likely, that you're gonna get a question in relation to special journals. Um, okay, and then finally a question about bank reconciliations. So again, another question relating to bank reconciliations showing you uh, how important that's gonna be. And you can check the format again. You gotta prepare the bank reconciliation and then prepare journal entries relating to any adjustments required to the ledger. So you see now three examples of the types of bank reconciliation questions, all very, very similar format. So again, you do the practice questions. My, my advice to you is to do the practical questions, do the Draper consulting question, all right? And then work on the, uh, as a practice, do this past trimester exam paper as practice. By then, you'll be very, very adverse in the way uh, the, um, the exam is gonna run. Okay, so all of this material is being provided to you. It's all in your week 12 exam. You don't have to go search for it. It's all there, it's part of your week 12 materials. What you do need to go to is when you're doing those questions, if you are getting stuck, go back, previous homework questions, period, period, previous tutorial questions, videos that were recorded for you. Uh, also, look at your textbook relating to these topics to get a real understanding. They all provide you notes. Have your notes next to you when you're doing the take home exam and you'll be fine. So uh, that takes us to um, completing your online revision. So again, our advice to you is to do the practical questions, online revision activities, and revision of your past trimester exam. Do the past trimester exam. Do it timed if you wish to. So that takes you through to the exam revision. All of these things up until between now and the start of next Monday, you got questions, need assistance with it, need to go through anything, please contact me and I'm able to take you through that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, or if enough of you want help, happy to do a group session. Um, and of course we'll be, you know, this all comes down to the last three points here. Now, just as a reminder, the Podesco uh, activity is due now. Um, and we've only had one student who's actually um, has completed uh, that to date. Uh, and um, however, the other five of you haven't, and it's really, really important that you get that done. It does take up a significant amount of your assessment marks. So if you can please get that prepared ASAP, um, that needs to be finished and assessed straight away. Any delays or questions about that, you may contact me. Other than that, uh, like I said, we're here to help you and just the very best of luck in regards to the exam. Um, any questions, I uh, implore you to reach out.